Hello, and welcome to this World Geography online training content video brought to you by the Georgia Department of Education. In this video, we will be addressing Georgia Standards of Excellence SSWG 5A, dealing with changes to agricultural technology. Let's look at the standard and element we will address in this video. SSWG 5 asks teachers to teach students to analyze human interactions with the world's environments. Let's unpack that a little bit. The standard is essentially asking, how do people interact with the land? Element A asks teachers to teach students to describe how and why agricultural techniques and technology have changed over time. For example, irrigation, crop rotation, green revolution, and GMOs. Now let's unpack the element. This is essentially asking why and how have specific agricultural methods and knowledge changed over time? In fact, these questions could be used as essential questions for and within a unit of instruction on this standard and element. It is important for students to understand that humans interact with the environment every day in many ways, most without even thinking about it. In fact, Human Environment Interaction, or HEI, is one of five commonly accepted themes of geography. It is also imperative for students to know agriculture is one of the most fundamental and important ways humans interact with the environment. Without successful agriculture, there is no successful sedentary humanity. Without agriculture, humans are nomadic hunters and gatherers, moving with food sources instead of cultivating them. Lastly, students should capture that the methods for producing agriculture have evolved over time, increasing efficiency and yield, resulting in the ability to support larger populations and increasing life expectancies. For this video, we will look at each specific example provided in the standard. We'll explore the reasons for and changes to each agricultural technology or method, starting with irrigation, then crop rotation, the green revolution, and finally, genetically modified organisms, or GMOs. Okay, let's start by looking at irrigation. Essentially, irrigation is taking fresh water from where it naturally exists and moving it to where it is needed for watering crops. This makes it possible to have fields of crops further away from fresh water sources. This also allows humans to produce agriculture in a dry season or region. This makes agriculture much more reliable since growing is not as dependent on precipitation. Irrigation has been and continues to be done by simple ditches, canals, and now mostly underground pipes in developed countries. Why did humans change this agricultural technology to flow underground? Evaporation. A ditch or canal is exposed to sunlight which can lead to losing some of that water to the atmosphere. Eventually, humans controlled freshwater resources even more by pooling freshwater behind dams. These dams started as earthen material dams, but now are some of the greatest structures and marvels of modern technology in the world. For example, the Three Gorges Dam in China, Hoover Dam in the United States, and the Aswan High Dam in Egypt. Most modern day dams have an added benefit, the ability to produce hydroelectric power. One drawback of creating freshwater reservoirs with dams is, again, evaporation. For example, experts estimate that up to 25% of all Nile River waters entering Lake Nasser are lost to evaporation. This is not helped by the fact that Lake Nasser is in the Sahara Desert. Even today, scientists are exploring new ways to lose less water to evaporation as irrigation continues to evolve and serve human agricultural purposes. Next, let's look at crop rotation. The basic idea here is to rotate the production of different crops onto different segments of land. 
The reason is because the growth of some crops uses specific nutrients, while other crops use different nutrients. Some crops deplete the soil, while others enrich the soil. With crop rotation, the soil is not depleted of one nutrient over and over by the same plant season after season, making the land less usable over time. Additionally, one segment of land remains empty or fallow to more completely replenish the nutrients in the soil. For example, if I have one plot of land, I might divide it up into four segments. The first growing season, I might grow cotton on the first segment, peanuts on the second, peas on the third, and leave the fourth segment fallow. In the next growing season, I would rotate which crops were grown on which segment and which segment was left fallow. While humans have been practicing crop rotation for thousands of years, it was George Washington Carver that popularized this method in the United States, particularly in the South. Just like with irrigation, scientists and farmers continue to work to find the most optimal rotations to produce the largest yields of crops in the most efficient way. Now let's turn our attention to the Green Revolution. This was a change to the process of agriculture throughout the world in the middle of the 20th century, but primarily in developing countries like India, Mexico, Brazil, and the Philippines. The introduction of new fertilizers, pesticides, and irrigation tactics assisted impoverished countries to meet the demands of growing populations by providing more nutrition to their people. In some places, adding top dressing fertilizers to soil to replace nutrients replaced former ideas like crop rotation, but not everywhere. Another change was toward new non-native crops that produced higher yields. This shift to artificial fertilizers and non-native plants has not come without criticism. Some suggest the quality of diet has decreased due to non-native varieties of crops. This has also reduced the natural biodiversity of many places. Additionally, small family farms all over the world were put in jeopardy by the increasing corporate nature of agricultural production brought on by the Green Revolution. Many people in the world today rely on subsistence farming as a way of life. Also, they rely on the occasional surplus to sell at market. The increase in agricultural production produced by the advantages of the Green Revolution reduced the benefit of such surplus crops. Green Revolution crops were less expensive and more readily available. Lastly, artificial fertilizers and pesticides have polluted drinking water due to soil erosion and runoff, leading to health concerns for citizens. Overall, there are obvious positive and negative impacts of the Green Revolution. However, the bottom line is that it increased overall food production across the planet. Our last specific agricultural technology we will look at today is genetically modified organisms, or GMOs. These are organisms which have been genetically altered by scientists to make specific crops more resistant to drought, pests, and disease. GMOs also allow certain crops to be grown in non-native places. A common theme here, the overall goal of this increase in agricultural technology is to produce a greater yield. The use of GMO crops is increasing exponentially. According to one report from the International Service for the Acquisition of Agrobiotech Applications, the amount of land used to produce GMOs across the globe has increased by a factor of 100 over the past 20 years. The USDA claims that in 2014, 94% of soybeans, 96% of cotton, and 93% of corn grown in the United States were genetically modified in some way. In some ways, this could be described as a second and maybe even more significant green revolution. The implications are far-reaching. Per a meta-analysis of the impacts of genetically modified crops written in 2014, the author Klumper reports that the use of GMOs has reduced chemical pesticides by 37 percent 
increased crop yields by 22% and increased farmer profits by 68%. While GMOs present some obvious benefits and have been generally considered safe for human consumption, there are still plenty of critics. Opponents point out GMOs may not even be necessary to meet the world's demand for food and can be subject to intellectual property law, only intensifying the corporate nature of agricultural production across the globe. Humans need food to survive. People have increased the food they produce over time through a variety of changes to methods and technologies like irrigation, crop rotation, the Green Revolution, and GMOs. This has led to increases in overall food production and therefore population and life expectancies. However, it has not come without a cost and plenty of unanswered questions. A question worth exploring with students may be why certain areas of the world continue to experience famine even though each of these technologies and methods explored here today have had the aim of increasing production. Also, as we've seen in each example, the technology is still changing to this day. Humans are continually working on new ways to interact with the environment to increase agricultural efficiency. Here are some helpful links for further learning. Thanks for watching.